Hello everyone, in this video I will explain you how to read numerical values from text or comma separated values files in MATLAB. This text file contains numerical data that we want to read. As you can see, the numerical values are separated by commas. You can see the first row and you can see the last row. So let us explain how to generate this file first. Here's the C code that I wrote that will write this file. Basically, I'm using an approach that's based on fprintf function and I explained this approach in one of my previous video tutorial. A link to this video tutorial is given in the description below. Here I'll just briefly go over this file. So uh, this is a string literal that defines the file name. This is basically a counter that loops over here and prints every row of numerical data to the file. Then here I open the file using the fopen function. I specify the file name that's defined over here and this is the pointer, file pointer, that's used over here to test if the file is being opened or closed. If the file pointer is equal to null then I have an error over here and I close my program. So this for loop over here writes the data to my file. I simply write the first column as my counter and the second column is a double or float that's a scaled version of my counter and once I write down these files I close my file. Here I'm using the write mode for writing the data. You can also use the append mode, that is you can change here A in order to basically append the file with the existing values. Okay, so that's basically the code. You can compile it over here and you can run it. And my antivirus program basically it's trying to check this executable file everything is fine over here and here in this folder you can see the file so here is the file contain, containing numerical data that we want to import in MATLAB okay next we explain how to import this data in MATLAB so first of all you have to make sure that over here you have the correct path so if you saved your data to a certain folder, you have to make sure that the path of this folder is correct over here. Otherwise, just change the path by, for example, clicking over here or clicking on C. You can find your, basically, your uh, folder. In my case, it's over here. And you can adjust it over here. Okay, first we clear pack and CLC. Clear the memory pack the memory space and clear the command window. Then there are several options for importing the file or importing numerical data. The first option is to use the DLM read or delimiter read function. You can type help DLM read and you can say, you can see the explanation, the complete explanation. Since the file over here has a nice form that you can see over here. Uh, we will not have any, have any problems by directly using this function. Later in the video I will explain you what happens when you have textual data over here and how to deal with textual data, how to ignore textual data, which is often the case in practice. So we read the file, okay, and we store it in our matrix A. So if you type whose, you can see this is your A matrix. This is the first approach. The second approach is to use, use C, C, CSV read function or comma separated value read. Again, if you type help comma separated value read, you should see the help of this function. And my advice is always to read this short description. So let's execute this code line and let's see what happens. Here's my B matrix, A minus B is zero. And a nice thing is to observe the following is that we have doubles over here. So MATLAB automatically 
performs data conversion from text to DAPL. And if you're using MATLAB version 2020 or 2019 or 2021 or 2022, you have this function that's a very intelligent function that directly reads the data. And here's the result. Here's our matrix C again. Here's who, here's matrix C. A minus C will give a zero matrix. Okay, so this is a basic approach when your file is super clean. Okay, now let us see how to deal with textual data. Usually files have a column header. For example, you can have something like this, column one and column two. Make sure that you don't leave spaces between two columns and we can add a textual column, the last column, which will be text column, text, let's call it text one and text two. Okay, now let's say that this is your data file and let's say that you want to read this data file in MATLAB and you're only interested in numerical values. So let's see how to deal with this problem over here. Okay, so let's follow the previous approach. Here I will call the DLM read function. And immediately you will get an exception or error. Error using DLM read line 147, actual text, column one, column two, expected a number or literal, not a number infinity possibly signed, case insensitive. So there is an error. You cannot read text data by using this function. Okay, let's see how CSV read function works. So we do second approach and you see the result. The result is very similar. In fact, this function is actually calling DLM read. So it's probably just a wrapper function. And let's follow the third approach the third approach is to use read matrix function. And let's see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. so we are able to read something and you can see that DLM read function is not able to deal with this problem and the read matrix function is able to deal with this problem. Deal, uh, read matrix function simply ignores the first textual row. However, you can see that the row, the last row that's actually textual is replaced by not a number, right? There is an approach to deal with NAA uh, symbol in MATLAB. However, I'm not going to explain this approach. Instead, I will use a more uh, rudimentary approach to read basically numerical data from a file that contains textual and numerical data. And I will ignore all the textual data or the rows that are textual. So we will go back to our DLM read function and let us analyze our file. So this file contains 12 rows and basically contains two columns. Here the columns are separated by commas, right? It's so we want to read everything starting from the second row until the 11th row and we want to read first and second column. Luckily, DLM read function contains an additional two arguments that can be used to separate text and headers or last columns or rows containing basically textual data. So we use the DLM read function, we specify the file name. This option here is our delimiter, basically, since our file or actually the numerical values are delimited by commas and the last argument is basically a row vector containing offsets. These offsets basically define the range of rows and columns that we are going to read and they start usually from zero. So if we want to read everything starting from let's say the second row we specify here the value one and we want to read everything until the 11th row, so we specify here basically the value 10. This is simple, this is similar to Python notation where all the arrays and matrices are indexed 
index from zero. And then we want to read first and second column. So let's execute this code line and voila, here is our result. We can see that basically all the values are correctly read and the first and the last textual rows are simply neglected. Besides creating this video tutorial, I also created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I explained in this video. You have uh, the C code, you have all the explanations, you have all the functions that I explained over here. So it's a very detailed post uh, that contains everything that you need to know. Of course, I spent a lot of time creating this video and this post, so you would do me a favor if you could press the like and subscribe buttons. And that would be all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you very much and have a nice day.